All right. Well, Dave, I know coming into this fight, uh, you had a lot of respect for Clifford. I mean, you, you, you weren't uh, masking that, but tough fight tonight. Did he prove even tougher than you thought he might be? Yeah, he proved tougher than I thought he was going to be. I mean, he's a... He's like what I call the old Chevy, you know, he's like one of those guys that's been there. He's been wrestling for a long time. And, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to just break him up like with like dirty boxing and stuff like that, knees and clinch and just nullify his boxing ability and use wrestling to, to just break his will. But like he stood around longer than I thought, you know, and I, you know, I was able to get him tired, but he kept coming back, you know, he kept getting that second win. Though. So it's one of those days where it was a, it was a long day on the saddle, you know, it was a long day in the office today. And um, I wanted to keep my winning streak, uh, my, not my winning streak, my uh, finishing streak going. And it, he broke my finishing streak, but I'll, I'll be back to um, to put that out there again. I'm hungry, man. I'm real hungry. At the end of the day, it is still another win for you. You are making history right now, you know, being one of these first ever guys to, to hold two titles. What does it mean to you? I mean, maybe not the, not, maybe not the way you wanted to get it done, but, but what does it mean for you to, 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 to be doing that? It means a lot to me because it's not too many guys that have done it. It's only uh, Dan Henderson and myself that have done it so far. You know, Conor McGregor's like looking to do it, and uh, I wish him the best. But right now, I'm the guy who's got it. You know, I got I got double gold, so that's the way it is. How hard is that? I mean, to to be able to peak your body at two different weight classes, how tough is it proving to to, to kind of pick and choose and balance and go back and forth? It's not tough at all. That's that's what I do for a living. I'm a I'm a professional, <clears throat> and if that means I have to go up a little bit. You know, I'm already a big middleweight, so it's not really difficult for me to go to 205. I just don't think that I'll stay at 205 for too much longer. It's not my natural weight, and a lot of those guys are huge. You know, you got some guys that go uh, to 205, and they come into the cage at almost 240 pounds. It's not the kind of guy that I'm looking to fight a five-round fight with or just a fight with. You know, some of those guys are just really big, you know, and that's the reason that they make weight classes. Eventually, I'm going to have to respect that. I did it to, I did what I did already. I got maybe a title defense or two at 205, and I'm going to relinquish that belt. Well, what would be next? What's that? Which one would you defend next? Like? Whichever one they have for me. I don't know who's what's on the roster. I got to go home and talk to the team, talk to management, and see what, what's out there for me. Did you happen to catch Vinny Magaia's performance tonight, and what do you think about him as a possible next uh, contender to fight next? I did not catch his fight. I was uh, focused on, on Clifford tonight. Um, like I said, anybody that they put in front of me is the guy that I'm going to fight. Specifically, of course, you know, you do hold that 205 pound belt and you say you're going to relinquish it after two defenses. But uh, do you feel like um, that if that changes at some point because of some guys bulk up, such as Ben Henderson, who decided to make that permanent change up to welterweight, you know, some guys decide to do that. Has that ever been an option that you've considered? No, no, I fight a lot better. I look better and um, just a, I just move better at 185. That's my weight. That's like. You know, at 205, I'm just a bigger guy. Like it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gaining things, but I'm giving up a lot of stuff that I, a lot of my natural abilities. So I don't think that I'm going to stay there too much longer. Yeah, you held a, a size advantage over Clifford. How much did that play into your overall game plan? I didn't even see. I got to go back and look at the tape. Um, I just thought that he was like short and wide. You know what I mean? And I'm like more long and lanky kind of. You know, so um, <clears throat> I know I was just longer than him, and I just had the experience advantage on him. I've I've fought these championship fights already before, you know. I've uh, I've been there with Yushin, you know, who's a really tough dude. You know, I've been in the championship fight with Jesse Taylor. I've been in championship fight with Teddy Holder. Um, so this was my fourth championship fight, and I just knew it was like another day in the office. I had to go in there and do what I had to do. <clears throat> Have you got it through your head now that you're not going to go back to construction work in New York? No, <laughs> it's too cold, man. It's too cold. But I mean, you've re you you. You've resolved the fact that that's the end of it for you. That's huh? the end of it. It's, I'm just so tired of that. Like, I love the uh, guys in 580 are the best, local 40 guys, but my guys are 580. Um, and I love all those guys, man. They, they're, they're one of the reasons why New York looks so beautiful. They wrap all that skin around those big, tall buildings. But it's a, it's a rough gig, man. And, and, like, you know, this is a rough gig, so I don't know which one is, like, uh, rougher, but I can't do that anymore. That's, this, is, this is what I love to do. I love martial arts, so this is what I'm going to dedicate myself to until I can't do it anymore. You go back and see them? I talk to them on like social media. I talk to them uh, via phone, stuff like that. They always wish me good luck. Um, you know, George from 580, all the, all the guys there. You know, I remember Dennis Lasardi, he got me in the union. Um, and he just kept, he kept telling me to keep calling back, keep calling back, and I, and I finally got in the union. But um, as soon as I got in, maybe a few years later, like five or six years later, I, I left. And I, I, I left to pursue this dream, and, and this is what I'm doing now. Mixed martial arts has finally come to New York. How much would it mean to you to be able to fight on the first World Series of card there? It would mean a lot, you know. Um, 
I, I, I really would like to fight on the first uh, World Series of Fighting card. I think that because I w I'd be able to bring a huge following. Um, Bruce, please, please put me on this thing. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, <clears throat> but I, I, it would mean the world to me to be able to fight in the Barclay, the Matt M MSG. Uh, yeah. My brothers fought there, you know, so just so many great events, so, so many great things have happened there. I'd like to be, a, a, you know, one of those guys that, like, you know, wows the crowd in New York City and just makes people go crazy, you know. I'd, I'd love to do that. I mean, is that one of those things that you kind of remember for the rest of your life? I mean, winning a title, <coughs> defending a title is a big deal. But being able to actually compete at Barclays, Madison Square Garden, someplace like that, I mean, where does that rank as far as mixed martial arts goals? That's a cherry on top, man. That's, like, huge. That's huge. That's that's almost as good as me going. That that's almost as good as me having double gold right now. You know, it's it's a it it just opens up a lot of doors for different fighters, a lot of a lot of opportunities for the sport, a lot of people, a lot of investors, and and just like uh, New York is a big city, it's a lot of money in New York, and because MMA was illegal there, they they didn't you know it's not too many people that are gonna invest anything in there. So now it's legal, so it opens up opportunities for like gyms, job, you know, just a, a bunch of stuff because it's gonna have to compensate the sport now. How many times do you think you could fight in 2016, considering that you have two titles that you need to defend? I'd like to fight two more times. I'd like to fight two more times, possibly three. They'd probably put me on the saddle for two. But um, I'd like to fight two more times, for sure. I can do it. I, I'm injury-free. I just came back from a shoulder surgery and a knee surgery. So no injuries this fight, and I'm ready to go again. I'm going to take one week off, and I'm right back in the gym. Got a lot of stuff to work on. Just a couple more questions. You talked about this a little bit in the cage, but uh, despite the finish streak being stopped, talk about how important it was to sort of beat Clifford Starks in his own game. I mean, you have talked about your wrestling and the evolution of it. Mm -hmm. It looked good tonight against a high-level guy. Uh, my corner was yelling at me with a lot of stuff, and they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna pop me upside the head with a lot of, a lot of stuff. It should have been cleaner. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's an accomplished wrestler. I never wrestled in college or, or high school, but I'm one of those guys that like, have been around like, uh, you know, places like uh, David Esposito, Gerard Rinaldi, a lot of the guys from Cornell uh, at the Edge and uh, Hoboken, New Jersey. It's like um, it's a it's a mecca for wrestling. It's like you get the baddest dudes that go in there. And I've been wrestling with these guys for a long, long time, and, and that's what people don't see. So like when you get to see stuff like that, you know, just a guy like me who just changed his life and decided to fight out wrestle a guy who's been wrestling all his life. That's a product of that, you know. You know that's that's what people don't see. They don't see the hard work inside the gym, but they see it right there in the cage. You're one of those guys who, I, when I look at you, I think that you're kind of, you know, Hensel Gracie obviously is a part of your, your camp and your, and your life. You remind me a lot of him. I mean, the, the mind, the body, everything sort of comes together. Um, talk about your team and how important they are to you and to, to bringing you to where you are because you're in full bloom right now. I mean, your mm -hmm. mind and your body is right where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Talk about your team a little bit. My team is everything to me. These guys are going to be with me until I'm done with this sport, and I'm not going to, you know, I, I believe in the stuff that they say. Sometimes I'm a little hard-headed. With Jamal Patterson, he like gives me a hard time with some stuff sometimes, but he's a really good coach, and I need to listen to my coaches a lot more. I think that sometimes I have my own way of doing things, and that makes me have hard nights like tonight. You know, I, it could have been a lot easier. That's it. I thank, thank you, you very much. That's it. Appreciate it. Got it.